I am here with Gibbon today, and we are hanging out here at Cedar Point. We are riding every single roller coaster here at Cedar Point tonight and ranking them. Lines are incredibly low because it's an extremely cold night, but we're hype anyway. So I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. Can we do it? And let's go. It is six o'clock right now and I'm headed into Cedar Point. We're gonna see how much we can do uh, tonight. And I would love to rank every single ride here at Cedar Point, well, every single roller coaster, uh, the rides that matter here at Cedar Point. Now this is empty enough that going to a self-serve is very, very feasible. So that's where I'm planning right now. So I'm pretty sure tonight Cedar Point opened at five. I think early entry was at four o'clock. Uh, so there should be, I mean, it, it's not looking very full. We're way past the, the towers way back there. And uh, it's looking like this is a nice empty night. I mean, really it's even, even the rows that are here are half full. I'm gonna be able to go all the way down. I mean, I could park in the front row here. As a matter of fact, let's do it. Just to prove the point. So yeah, this this might be the perfect night to ride every single ride here at Cedar Point. With all his Steel Vengeance merch on, here he is. Getting that sweet, sweet B-roll. Raptor, zero minute wait. At least that's what it says. We'll have to see how accurate it is. Yeah, so it looks like this is just about the perfect time to get in line here for Raptor. Um, it's gonna be probably a 10 minute wait. And a 10 minute wait for Raptor. Let's go. I forgot my hat. Someone's gonna forget something in one of the bins, one way or another. Maybe I should've just worn a beanie. Just go up, go to the back, wait for a person to help you, they'll help you out. And then uh, they'll have to open up one of them often. All right, he just unlocked it for me right there. Um, you just have to, he just has to get his little key out. More progress on the pavilion. Can't wait to see that thing next year. I am so excited. I don't think it's a worthy replacement for Wicked Twister. I'm Wicked tired. Twister sucks. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it looks like we have a zero minute wait here. And that's what the sign says for, for Gatekeeper. All right, Gatekeeper is experiencing a brief delay, but that's really not gonna hold us up too much. They're cleaning it right now. Cedar Point is so good at cleaning things very, very thoroughly. I appreciate the people who are working here so much for what they do, because um, that's not a fun job, but it is a good job that needs to be done. And here's our train. We are here, it's like a five minute wait. I didn't even check. It, we got right up to the front, so let's go. Guys, lines are so low right now. Uh, Val Raven shows at the highest at 20 minutes uh, next to Maverick, which is 45 minutes. I hope Steel Vengeance opens tonight. Um, it's not open right now, but we have all evening to hopefully see it open. But yeah, this is looking like it is the perfect night to ride every ride here at Cedar Point. All right, so we are going to rank all these coasters and maybe even the frights on the scream scale. Are you, are you seducing the camera? Okay. Um, <laughs> so where would you rank that out of 10 on the scream scale? Raptor, 10 out of 10. Gatekeeper, I'm gonna give it eight because it's running real good tonight, like nice and fast, and like even though it's cold, it was running pretty darn aggressively. See, I feel like you're so biased, I but am. I'm a B &M fanboy. <laughs> but I think I would rank Gatekeeper at like apparently I'm gonna be harsher than you are, a seven on the scream scale, and. Raptor at a five. Raptor, what? Raptor hits uh, uh, hard. No, no, no. It hurts. It, I, I don't know, it's too much for me. I can't deal with it. It's just a bit too intense. I much prefer a smoother ride, so 
I definitely enjoy that a lot better. That is this ride bad. will not open today. I'm not look. I was not looking forward to riding uh, Corkscrew, but I was going to rank it. We still can rank it based okay, on what ranking? we've done. You want my ranking? It's zero. One out of ten. <laughs> one out of ten. One out of ten. <laughs> this is a linear scale, and I can't vote zero, and I can't vote eleven. It's a one out of ten. <laughs> All right. So one out of ten for given for me. I think I would give Corkscrew a three out of ten, no, just simply for the purpose of that it's very historically like oh, a one, big deal. One for each inversion. Right? <laughs> yep, that works. No, I, I mean, it was, it was like huge at the time when it was made. It was the biggest and most looping coaster that they had. Now the problem with Corkscrew is that Corkscrew hurts. You ride it, it's not fun, at least not for most adults anyway. Um, it is fun in that you get to go over the walkway and all that kind of stuff. You get to go upside down over the walkway. It's always fun, um, but it's not fun in the way of just like banging your head back and forth. So I don't love that, um, but I still love the historic nature of the ride itself. Certainly not my favorite by any means, but it is definitely something that I, uh, you know, I can appreciate at least. Now, Gatekeeper, on the other hand, it just isn't the best. So I only ranked it at a seven because I know it gets better from Gatekeeper. Zero minute ride, wait time for Magnum. We're gonna get right on and we're gonna rank this thing. Late at night here, we've got a zero minute wait for Magnum. It is only 7.07 right now. And next, we are headed to Backbeat Q. We are starving. And I haven't eaten here for a while, so I just ranked this as one of my lower ranked places to eat. Let's see if it still ranks there or not. Maybe it's changed a little bit throughout the year. It does look like they have a few new offerings. It looks like they have maybe some uh, is it soup, it looks like. And uh, corn, corn cobbits. <laughs> this lady is so much fun. Now I do think maybe the smoked brisket looks good. Can I get the burn eggs and can I also get one of those out? Now the burn ends have been kind of a sticking point for me that hasn't been quite so great. But I'm not sure about the brisket. It's good, it is fatty though. So after conquering the world, yeah, first time lots of fat. Like that's, that's all fat. Last year I was here constantly for barbecue, but like even here, like that's all fat. That's all fat. That just came off of this, off of the side, which I mean, it's a big piece. So like, it's not that it's terrible that it has some fat, but if the fat isn't rendered, like that's all fat right there too. And it's just a lot of, a lot of fat. And I'd rather have something else. Now, the corn is absolutely delicious, though. But it's hard to do me wrong with corn, though. All right, gate. <laughs> all right, gatekeeper. All right, gay. All right, gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all right, Given. Where would you rank um, Magnum? Okay. This one, I'm going to be a little bit more critical. Really? Magnum is one of my favorite rides of all time. I was gonna say. But the trim brake pissed me off. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. <laughs> all because of the trim brake. It pissed me off. You're, you're, such a, you're such a roller coaster nerd. If I give Gatekeeper a, a seven, then I feel like I have to give this one, I think a six. I think it was better than Raptor for me, but oh. definitely. Um, Nothing's better than Raptor. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Best way to tick you off is to compare something to, to Raptor. Um, but it's definitely something that I enjoyed one way or another. Um, so, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad we did it. It was super fast. Coming down that hill um, initially because we, we were in row 17, 
which he says is a magic seat. I don't believe in magic seats. I, I believe variety is the spice of life. But coming down over that hill, going up very, very slowly, and then just like straight down, it was really fun. All right, so where would Gemini, it, I, it's obviously not open tonight. Where would Gemini rank for you uh, from what you've done over the season? Five. Five? I think that's fair. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just right there. It's just it's, nice. It's a filler toaster. I'm not good. I'm not nice. I'm just right. All right. Well, I think I would give Gemini um, about probably actually, I, I would probably give it a six, honestly. I like it that it's, to me, it's a bit more of a smooth ride. And I have to admit, <coughs> my daughter absolutely loves it. So it does take it up a notch to know that my daughter absolutely adores it. So I am going to give Gemini just a little bit higher on that regard. Our next ride is Cedar Creek Mine Ride. It says about a 15 minute wait and on the app it says 15 minutes. There is no way it is 15 minutes though. This looks like anyway, it has a non-existent line. So I guess we'll find out. We'll see what we actually find out. Okay, so I think they're only running one train. So given said two, um, that barely moved and we were still standing there. So we're, we're gonna come back later on tonight and hit that when there's not a line. There's already a line here for Slaughterhouse. It is a great one, but I'm uh, not into waiting for lines like that, especially not on a night like this, when no lines are going to be necessary at all. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Now, if you like theme park stuff, and especially Cedar Point stuff, you should, I'm here constantly, I'm here all the time. And this winter, we're gonna be doing all kinds of additional content about Cedar Point. I have additional footage, I have additional days spent here at the park that you guys have yet to see. I have some ranking videos. I have all kinds of stuff. We are going to continue the conversation all winter long. So press that subscribe button. Not to mention, we've also got Winterfest down at Kings Island. We also have some water parks. The, we also have some water parks that we are going to be hitting. So press that subscribe button. Come and join us here on the channel. Uh, we would love to have you guys watch and hang out with us here at Cedar Point and uh, just here on the channel. Uh, cont contribute to the discussion, press those, press those like buttons, all that kind of stuff. We can hear the Fantastics right now playing at the good old Red Garter Saloon. Iron Dragon says about a 15 minute wait. I never believe that though. I don't know why it always says it. There is a decent-ish line, but again, I don't think it'll be 15 minutes, but either way, we do have the time to wait. I do love first row on Iron Dragon. Honestly, one of my favorite rides in the park, just simply for its view. So just to put this into perspective, it has been a six minute wait here. And that feels like one of the longest waits of the night. Okay, what do you give it on the scream scale? Um, I'll give it a six. Six? Yeah, I'll give it a six. Oh wow, that's a lot higher than I thought you'd rank it. Well, the front row helped a lot. That was cool. Okay. And getting to see Dragster. And it is fun, I guess. So. Fair enough. I like it better than Gemini. I think I'm going to give it. Yeah, I do like it better than Gemini. I think I'm going to give it a seven. They all finally succumbed to the cold. They put shirts on. Now tonight we're gonna go try the Mr. Midnight. Now the last time I had it, um, it hurt my stomach. But the Mr. Midnight is a really, really fun drink here at Cedar Point. Uh, it's got some smoke coming out of it and a bubble over it. So much fun. Can't wait to get, try it again. We'll see what happens.
One, two, three. Woo! <laughs> oh, you still got bubble too. <laughs> All right, so we got the Mr. Midnight. I don't remember how it tastes really, so let's try it again. Oh, this time it tastes significantly different. I heard Kernication say it tastes just like, uh, which by the way, you should go check them out also. You also should go check out Gibbon. He's got two different channels. So he has one, uh, Gibbon Speaks, and the other one is Gibbon Taylor. You should go check out both of them. Uh, it's got some really great content on both. But they said it tasted kind of like Kind of like grape juice. And I agree, it tastes a lot like grape juice. And they don't even taste the alcohol, so. What do you think of this? I really like it. You? Yeah, it's really okay. good. This is a chugger. If there is actually alcohol in it, which I can't taste it if there is. It's a dangerous drink, definitely. Okay, I know shows aren't massively your thing, so what'd you think of uh, the Shrieks? Oh, they were really cool. Yeah, are they? Yeah. Um, okay. Like you said, like shows aren't huge for me, but um, I can appreciate live entertainment, and Halloween is done very well, so. I think they are taking a page out of SeaWorld, though, because they're trying to make their shows sexier. I'm yes. noticing that. All right. No line here, which means we're gonna have to finish these drinks up real fast. That is also one of the really cool things about Iron Dragon. Iron Dragon gives you a good view um, all the way around of both Millennium Force and of Rougarou. So if you're not quite sure whether the lines are looking good, and you don't wanna waste time um, while you're walking, because I'm all about efficiency, usually, unless I'm all about relaxation. Those are the two things I'm usually about. Um, if that's the case, hop on Iron Dragon, you won't waste any time, but you will get to see what the lines are looking like on both sides of the, of, uh, the rides around you. So how about you? I'm actually feeling this drink. Are you? A little bit, yeah. So it might be more than I think it is, but it, it literally just tastes like a Welch's grape juice, at least to me, that's what it tastes like. And look, I'm not knocking a Welch's grape juice. If it's fruity, that's great. If it's sugary, that's different. Welcome back, Green Train. And we are hitting very back row. All right, so Rougarou was incredible. Um, where would you place it on the Scream scale? That was an eight out of 10. Eight out of 10? On the Scream scale. I'm Okay, I'm gonna say seven again. I'm not gonna say eight yet. I'm gonna say seven, because usually that ride is horrible, but it was so smooth tonight. It's incredible. Okay, we decided not to go for Millennium Force. Uh, we're gonna go over to hit Bow Raven and maybe to hit a few of the um, haunts this evening also, um, since we've got a little bit of time here and uh, we'll wait for those roller coasters kind of to lose a little bit more steam tonight. Um, because I think the show just ended, I think a whole bunch of people got in line. So we'll wait a few minutes on those. All right, we've got the Slash Mob here. We're gonna check out just a few minutes of them. Now, I'm not sure how long the line for Erie Estates will be. 
So we're gonna need to go check out the haunting at Erie States right now. I'm always looking initially here at what the freight lane is doing. It looks like the freight lane is very, very little, which means, which means the line may not be that bad. We'll have to see what's happening. All right, it looks pretty empty. We shouldn't have much of a problem at all with this. Oh yeah, it's just a straight shot. We'll have to wait just a little bit up here. Should be perfect. This won't take us long at all. <laughs> you guys are awesome. We're very close to the front. I'm not sure that it'll be us next or in just a minute here, but if it's next, it'll be about seven minutes. If we're after that, it'll be maybe nine minutes. This is a good backdrop. Fun little photo op for your kids. Where does the haunting at Erie Estates rank for you? So, okay, before I come off, it's too critical. I understand it's a Thursday night, so they don't have many people. Um, that was a big thing when I was in Slaughterhouse here at Cedar Point, and they didn't have a whole lot of people there. would just be like, maybe literally five, six people in the entire house. So, it was good. The feeling was good. Um, I would give it a solid, like, six out of ten. Six out of ten? Okay. This is actually orchestrated very well. It would just be better if they had more people in there. Yeah, sure. I definitely agree with that. Um, I always love the haunting at Erie States for some reason. Like, I, I go through these houses all the time, but for some reason, this night, it kind of made my knees kind of wobble. Like, I was feeling kind of weak in the knees. And not like in a, like, this is hot kind of a way, but in like a, I was scared kind of a way. Uh, on the scream scale, I think maybe I'd give it like a, a seven and a half. Say a seven and a half, yeah. I think so. And the hex we go, there is no line. There's actually a longer freight lane line than there is regular line for hex right now. And that's a good thing because we are headed straight over to Midnight Syndicate as soon as this is done. So this gives us plenty of extra time. That was definitely fun. I think for me, I would give it a I, I think a five on the on the fears, or I think a five on the scare scale, scare scale. Scream scale. Scream scale? I think, is that what we call it? I don't know, I whatever don't... it was. I'm a <laughs> professional, guys. It was a lot longer than I remember it being, um, and it was definitely a vibe, like the vibes were really cool, but it's, again, it's a Thursday night, there weren't enough people in there, so I'm gonna also give that a six. Nothing for Gatekeeper. Nothing at all. We are headed to Midnight Syndicate right now. Um, this is obviously a show in the Jack Aldrich Theater. Um, it's a fantastic show. Not, I wouldn't call it one of my favorites. I think it kind of uses the same formula every year, but it's definitely still fun, kind of creepy. Good way to start your day, um, definitely. Um, but we are here 15 minutes early and the line is not even to the gate yet. So. This is looking pretty decent to me. Let's go. 918 and they're letting us in here at the Jack Aldrich Theater. There's a, there's a sign on the door that says this ghost story may be too intense for children. Definitely take heed of that. I think that's an important thing to take note of. <laughs> Yourselves. 
It is time for Boo Streak. So we're heading in there right now. I'm anticipating no wait at all. It looks like that's exactly what I'm gonna get to. We have five minutes until 10 o'clock right now. I think we can make it on before the 10 o'clock hour. But so far we have done, I think, did we do six roller coasters? So I think we've done 12 things. Should be four per hour on average so far. And one of those hours was only a half hour. Now we do have some of our biggest things ahead of us though. So keep your fingers crossed that we can make it through all the rest of the coasters and the uh, haunted attractions tonight. All right, where does Blue Streak rank? Where would you put it? That is a six out of 10 on the screen. It, I think I'm gonna do six out of 10 too. Of 10. Yeah. It's a good ride, it's a, hard, it's a certified hood classic. You gotta love it. A certified hood classic. It's the oldest coaster in the it's park. It's got great airtime. It does have some I, I mean, it's like really for the time, it's kind of crazy. 1964, I yeah. mean, you gotta respect its age. It's, so. it's yes, it's very respectable. So. It up next to like some of the bigger coasters like Val Raven. Which is where we're headed Valley next. Wars. It's, you know, it's. it's it pales in comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No way, and that is literal. There's literally no one on the steps other than these two people right in front of us. Now the funny thing is, lines are so low because it's so cold out right now, and because it's a Thursday too, but I don't think it's that cold. So I'm actually kind of amazed by the lack of lines. Maybe it's just that everyone came last week because it was uh, fall break, and then this week they've just ignored it because they got it out of their system. That was a literal walk on. It's a 10. It's a 10 for me. You know what? I'm going to give that a 9. A 9? I think that's fair. But for me, I, first of all, I haven't ridden it in a while. And it's so smooth. And I just I love it. A couple of months, probably. And it beasts it up when it's. A, a, a no minute wait you, you walk right onto it like if, if I waited an hour and a half for that it would be like an 8 but it's a 10 because there was no wait that's like it's perfect but anyway right now we are on our way uh, toward the back of the park once again so that we can go grab a drink Val Raven is such a fantastic ride I just love I love that ride So this is actually my first time here at the blood bar because usually this thing has a huge line. Given wants a blood bag, and I think I'm doing I want to suck your blood or drink your blood or whatever. All right, so check this thing out. I love this. Oh yeah, I want to see yours too. You want to video it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you can't really see right here. Woo! Well, that's cool. You kind because of the, the red, shot. the red light. Yeah, but yeah, yeah you had the yeah, shot. shot into that yeah. <laughs> Zombie juice blood bag. That's right. I guess if you want to consider this a blood bag, and it's let's see, it's, it's just green like, blood. Like green that's all. Apple or something. It's it's delicious. I mean, and it definitely does taste like alcohol. See, and that's the problem to me. I want it to taste like alcohol. That is way too sweet for me. But this thing, it is sweet, but it tastes a little bit more fruity rather than sugary, and I no, can deal this, with that. This actually does taste like alcohol in my opinion. Does it? Yeah. Okay. We do have just a tiny weight here. In front of us. But I'm gonna have to chug this thing real fast. It kind of tastes like a lemonade, like a pink lemonade. Um, I would give it that kind, of a, that kind of a vibe. Now, here's the issue though. Kings Island has some really warm drinks for Winterfest. They need a warm cider, something like that, with some alcohol still in it here. Because you're walking around, it's freaking freezing, and you've got a cold drink with ice in it, so it doesn't help your fingertips any. And there's just a little bit of a weight up here, just perfect so I can finish this thing. 
chug, chug, chug. What What do you think of it? Is that Tyler Gasco? It's just been done on purpose. All right, we ran into Tyler here. He's choosing us to ride with him. So we're going to have some fun. Let's go. Okay, so apparently it was a slow night on Millennium Force, but for me, it was a 10. I loved it. I had a blast on it, but I do want to hear from you. What, do, what did you think? I give that a seven out of 10 because it was smooth, it was fast, and it was fun overall. But you but said it wasn't fast. It's, well, it, I mean, okay, it's still the fastest coaster at the park that's operating, so I'll give it that, even though it is running a little bit slower than usual, but, um, yeah, I mean, also the, like the airtime was kind of lacking because it is cold and it was kind of crawling over those camelbacks. I, I did feel that, but I kind of like that. I kind of like that feel I mean, of, just like yeah, yeah. I like feeling the airtime where you're kind of flying. Over. Okay, I, I guess that makes sense. That's, I guess that's the difference in what we like. So, all right, so 10 for me, seven for Given. Let's go on to our next coaster. Uh, we're trying to hit Lusty Lills or uh, Wake the Dead at 11 o'clock. Right now, we still have about 20 minutes on that. So we're going to go see if we can hit one more thing. Okay, so right now, we are on our way out to Blood in the Bayou and possibly Cornstalkers. Maybe we can do both of them. We're going to go hit those first. Of course, though, we have to walk through Banished right here. Where are you at? Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> okay, skeletons on our way back to Blood on the Bayou. Now, coming back here, it really, truly feels like all you're doing is a walk to nowhere. But when you get back there, there are actual things. It's on Adventure Island. It's in the Forbidden Frontier area where the High Ropes course is and all that kind of stuff. And where all the characters show up um, for the kids during the year. Whoa, hello. So, yeah, we got me too. All right, and 20 minutes later, we are back out on the main path. That really does, like, we, we walked pretty fast, and it still takes a long time to get back there. All right, all right, so we are counting Lusty Lils or um, Wake the Dead as a loss. Um, instead, Fear Ground Freak Show is where we're going right now. We're going to hit all the haunts and all of the rides except for one. All right, so now we are headed off into Maverick. Maybe we'll go check out the end of Lusty Lils real fast if we have a moment to spare. I'm not sure though, we'll be walking right past it, so it's pretty tempting when the line's this low. Fairground Freak Show. Where'd you rank it on the whatever scale? I'm gonna base my opinion off of my previous run through it instead of tonight's, because tonight's I would give a five out of 10. Tonight though, I would give it like an eight out of 10 because there was more people in it, more actors in it, and um, the, the energy was a lot better. So I'm gonna base off of that instead. Yeah, tonight, I think I would give it a four out of 10. It wasn't, wasn't the greatest, um, but it has been my favorite in past videos. Right now we are here at Maverick. It's got a very low line, but not a nothing line. And I think this is the reason why we need to uh, skip Lusty Lils slash Wake the Dead for this evening. We are going to have to wait in a bit of a line and to only have about a half hour to hit that plus several more haunted houses it would, I'm pretty sure, be impossible. But instead, we've got a little bit of extra time because we're skipping over Wake the Dead tonight. Sometimes you gotta choose your priorities, and shows, while we've hit a lot tonight, are not the priority. 
for this evening. We just got in line when they said they are experiencing technical delays. So we're on our way instead to our next thing. I'm not quite sure what that next thing is. Probably Pirate Cove. Cut Maybe throat. we'll see. Oh, Cutthroat. Oh, I always call it Pirate Cove. Cutthroat Cove. Every time I call it Pirate Cove. Sorry, guys. <laughs> for those of you who like to harp on me for research. Fake Cedar Point. There fan. you go. You can gatekeep That's me like all I want. That's gatekeep girl boss. <laughs> That's right. And we're on our way in. It's going to be just the last few minutes of Lil's, but that's okay. Maybe we'll catch the last song. All right, so we're going to Cutthroat Cove, not Pirate Cove. I always call it Pirate Cove. So we're gonna hit this, and then we're gonna move on to our final things for the night, yeah. Corn stalkers, yep. All right, so we're just gonna jump right in um, to Corn stalkers, which is where we're headed right now. You won't be in the vlog? There you go, all right. Nobody's here, let's go. Now, we are not hitting Slaughterhouse tonight, um, but let's talk Corn Stalkers. Yeah, what? That was actually kind of cool. It was actually really good. <laughs> Everyone says it's super, like, anti-tactic, <laughs> and I mean, I mean... Well, and I always think it is, but tonight, it, it is, they were on their game. It is Corn Stalkers 2.0. Now, I just kind of said that they, they weren't so great. And there were a couple people who I know recognized me. So, because they said so in my ear. <laughs> so maybe they saw that and they were like, we're really gonna scare them. But there were times when the lights were off and we could see absolutely nothing. For that alone, even on a Thursday night like this, I'm gonna give that an eight screams out of 10. So, okay, I'm giving seven. Seven screams out of 10, but still, very good. Yeah, surprisingly scary. Um, not having any light at some of those points, that was the, the thing that really wigged me out. And then there were times when we were walking with just nothing like to guide us for a while. And then all of a sudden you'd have a scare. And because you've just been walking for a while, you'd get kind of used to just walking in a straight line. And then you'd get that scare and it would like really startle you so definitely good now pirate cove what you think um it, it's solid like it's not it's nothing to write home about i never thought it was it's a good way to look at maverick that yes some, like, i agree that you normally see. i agree and i've ranked that one really highly before um but tonight i think it i think for me i'm gonna give that uh Cutthroat Cove, not Pirate Cove. Cutthroat Cove, um, I think I'm gonna give it a, I think just a five out of 10. Like, it was fine, fog was really down low, um, so you didn't really have a lot of real strong scares like you usually do. Um, yeah, uh, like, like Given said, nothing to write home about. So we just got the official word from the fast lane attendant that Maverick is not back up yet, unfortunately. But we'll hit bloodbath first and then go hit Steel Vengeance as soon as we're done. There are people here waiting for Maverick, but Trent doesn't wait for rides that aren't moving. The problem with waiting for a ride to ride it at the end of the night is that you never know when it might close down. Um, sometimes if you're really looking forward to a ride, it is best to just ride it. Uh, whenever the time actually rises. Because, like I said, you never know when it might close down. But that also means a lot of times you're going to have to waste a lot of extra time in line to ride that ride uh, to strike when the iron's hot. So, just kind of depends on what your priorities for the day are. 
sometimes you end up missing out on a ride. And uh, that is always just a little bit frustrating when that happens. But here we are, bloodbath for one more scream. Although really it's less of a scream, more of a party, at least in my opinion. So yeah, so you do? Weird. It's so weird, but it's so fun. <laughs> I love it too. And it never has like a really long line. And the bouncer is just like the coolest guy I've ever met. So even when this queue is completely full, it is not particularly long. And that's a compliment. I love it that it's not horribly long. Um, but right now, obviously we don't need to wait at all. Strobe lights are going. Fun to be had. Let's go. We need to wait for oh, you. No way. Look who decided to show up right at the end, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's a bit familiar. <laughs> let's go have some fun, right? All right, let's go have some fun. All right, so bloodbath. Oh, what yeah. you think? No, really, really good. I actually really enjoy that one. <laughs> I was surprised. I mean, I love it anyway, but they pulled out all the stops tonight. Now, I know that, like, you guys did a great job because I know that they know me. <laughs> We're friends now. <laughs> so, um, thank you guys for pulling out all the stops because it was very scary this time, actually, and you guys ruined my life. So, let's go. Hello. All right, it's time for Steel Vengeance. There is basically no line. I'm not sure what it's going to be like on the other side, um, but we're on our way in right now. Oh, wow. This is nothing. We're going to go straight on. Got to get that footage. Wow, this is an incredible line here now. Now, this had like a 45 minute wait earlier today. Um, so now nothing and we can just get straight on. So we've hit everything except for Maverick that was open tonight. All right, now, where would you rank Steel Vengeance, first of all? Actually, let's start with Maverick because we didn't get to ride that one tonight. Maverick is also pissing me off, so I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 because it's fantastic when it wants to not be temperamental. That's true. Temperamental. So let's just say, for the season, I'm gonna give it you know what? It's an 8 out of 10. I was going to give it a 9 out of 10. It's my one and only 9 because Steel Vengeance gets a 10 from me. It's just, it's one of those where every time I'm on it, I take like a mental picture. Like, I can't, like just, I want to remember what it feels like during the off season. And it's just, it's so much fun. But watching videos of it doesn't capture it by any means. Uh, so... The POVs there online and all that kind of stuff, they're great. It's just not enough. So what Steel Vengeance for you? Uh, Steel Vengeance for me is a perfect 10 out of 10. So. Um, it's, it's right up there with Raptor. It does change from day to day. Like there are times when one thing that I loved just kind of switches again. Cedar Point has all kinds of incredible rides. Um, I remember meeting someone here from England like their big rides are our small rides here. I think that's true of a lot of parks. And I don't know. Parks in the country alone. Yeah, in our country. Point. Yeah. So we successfully did it. We rode every single ride, every single ride except for like one uh, that was open anyway for Maverick. Um, and then there were a few others that were not open all day long. Um, and then we did every haunted house except for Slaughterhouse, which was intentional. And then we did every show um, except for maybe one, but I think we actually got like seven shows done. Um, so <laughs> is it possible to do everything on a Thursday night? Yes, it is possible to do everything on a Thursday night, but I've also been trying to do this for like the majority of Halloween weekends. Haven't been able to. So <laughs> it's probably not usually possible. Today was the perfect circumstance of cold and it being thurs the Thursday after uh, fall break. Thank you so much to Given for being here today. 
definitely go follow his stuff. And uh, like I said, he's at Given Taylor and at Given Speaks on YouTube. Um, new yep, new channel. Um, also, please press that subscribe button, press the like button, and comment down below. Love to hear from you guys down there. And uh, let me know what you guys think of how weekends this year. Um, have you been able to do everything in one night? I mean, technically, we didn't do every single thing, but we did almost, I mean, it was, it was kind of a ridiculous number of things <laughs> tonight. Um, so let me know what your best has been here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and let's go. The front gate for processing.